Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build Erebor. We're back in Minecraft Vanilla 1.5.1, I think, is the version number, and we're recreating the town of Dale outside the front of Erebor and Lonely Mountain. Now, so far we've built the town hall, an amphitheater, a few houses, a residential area, and the bottom part of our trade district in Dale. And what we're going to try and manage this episode is the top half of the trade district. The final shops that will go in to our town of Dale. Now there might be some shops elsewhere, but these are all the ones that are going to go in at the top of the trade district. And you see here the underside. We built this massive stone brick platform on top of these. And that's where we're going to house the rest of the shops. Now, I'm not sure exactly how I want to approach this, and I want to add a bit more height to it as well. So, let's jump in and see what we can do. Okay, first I wanted to add a walkway around this kind of corner section of the platform. And this is going to be basically a way for you to get to the top level of some of the shops. I want the shops to be all on the ground level but to be an extra higher level where there's extra floors for more shops. And then I made a way to get to that platform, that walkway, by making some stairs here, adding some grass, because that's going to become a mini garden up here on the trade platform. Then using stone brick and stone brick steps, made archways around this walkway to give it a bit more support. And then filled in the road on top with cobblestone half blocks. Now, with the walkway complete, pretty much, I came around with some oak logs and I began to put down the framework for the shops. Also adding in, in between these foundations, areas for path with, again, cobblestone half blocks. Now, I knew one of these shops had to be the blacksmith because we need a blacksmith. Every good town needs a good blacksmith and that's going to be on the right this building that we're doing right now, right here. But before I cracked on with that, I finished up the foundations and built some more framework out of oak logs. Now I started to build the wall for this building with sandstone, but the problem was the foundations were quite compact and my strategy for building sandstone one block inside the wood logs was cool and everything, but it meant that sometimes the insides of the buildings would be very compact and very kind of squashed. So what I wanted to do is make the blacksmith pretty much an all outside building. You see here I'm building like a furnace section inside the building. And messing around a bit with bricks. But then once I had something I was happy with, I put down etched sandstone at the edges here. And this is going to become like a very open plan kind of blacksmith. Out front you have two anvils surrounded by these wooden fences. And an archway with some item holding signs that we're going to put a couple of anvils into so people can see that, hey, this is the blacksmith. Then I came around to the back and the sides and finished up the detail there with some stone bricks and then began work on the roof. Now the roofs for this section are going to be pretty much the same as the residential area, kind of shallow, incline, using red nether brick. But, of course, the blacksmith has a key component to its building and that's the furnace. And what I want from the furnace is, well, a chimney stack on top of the building to make sure that you know that, well, there's a way for the smoke and all the toxic vapors to escape. So again, coming around to this other shop over here and filling in the walls with that sandstone that we've gone for with the other buildings as well. And then tidying up the back building as well, just getting all those sandstone walls in place. And then raising the level of those buildings using these oak logs you see. Now I got a bit confused here with the building at the back. I wasn't quite sure how high I wanted it. And in the end, I brought it back down a peg with the copy and paste tool. But then once those foundations were complete and once the framework was all done, I came around to the front here and what I wanted was a kind of like a small outdoor kind of market stall area. So using oak planks, oak stairs, fence posts, and I'm using jungle stairs here for the roofs of these little market stalls, I began to build these kind of two small market stall things for again, maybe kind of food merchants to come and trade their wares here, maybe sell some rat burgers, 
or some horrible, horrible stew. Then I came over to the other shops, added in some more detail, some doors. I'm using fence posts as the windows here, just to mix it up a little bit. And then again, that traditional red nether brick shallow roof effect that we've gone for with the rest of the build. Then again, coming over to one of the larger buildings and filling in the remaining sandstone walls. Adding detail with the lightstone brick. Now, one thing I've gone for with this building is I didn't want this to be the same as all the other shops with just a door and a large kind of open window where they could show off their wares. What I wanted was small kind of individual cubicles at the side of this shop. So basically kind of small traders can set up shop here and maybe sell t-shirts or something, badges or candy floss or something like that. And you can basically walk up to these windows and it's just one guy in there in his little cubicle selling his wares. And then once the detail was done in this building, I came up to the top and again, yes, added that red nether brick effect, that shallow rooftop style. And again, adding detail around the front, where the front of the shop on the top level connects with the walkway. And as you can see, this looks pretty cool. Now that I've got this top walkway, we've got effectively four levels of trade in the trade district. And that's pretty cool. Then I added in some more stone brick, which is becoming definitely the, uh, the go-to tool for adding motif and decoration to these houses. Now the walls up top on these buildings are a little bit shorter. So the windows are a little bit different. There's no room for flower boxes on these buildings, but that's A-OK. -okay. We're just using kind of simple upside down sandstone steps and gaps in the sandstone wall to make kind of short stubby windows. Now, once the detail on those buildings was done, I came around to the sides here on the walkway and on the platform because what I wanted to, what I wanted to do was add a kind of fence that was different to the rest of the build. I didn't want that kind of leaning out stone brick. Instead, I went for like kind of stone brick steps connected by small sections of fence. Now, originally I was going to use iron bars, but the iron bars don't connect to the back sides of stone brick steps. Now, neither do wooden fence posts, but wooden fence posts look better when they don't connect, whereas iron fence posts look kind of bad. Then I added a bench on this small garden section and some cobblestone to get up to it. A couple of roses and some flowers. And then it was time to throw in some lighting in the form of these kind of glowstone fence post lampposts. Now, one cool thing I discovered with these lampposts is, well, I thought they look a bit kind of, they all look the same. They all look identical. And while that was kind of cool because we are going for themes, it was also looking, it also looked kind of, you know, a bit boring and a bit dull. So what I thought of was just altering the heights on one of the glowstone blocks. And you'll see what I mean in a minute when I kind of add a few lampposts in with this effect. But before I do that, I came around to the front here and I wanted to add another kind of staircase way for you to get up to the top level of the trade district. So with stone bricks, I began to jaggedly build down and construct these stairways. I then connected it up to the road that goes by the river, neatened off some of those hard edges a bit and filled in the gaps with some cobblestone steps and cobblestone half blocks. Now I had two drainage areas here where the water could come out that collects on the top trade platform. I threw down some half slabs, put in some trees for decoration, and then I dug a kind of wavy snaky path around this garden section on the edge of the trade district here. Filled in the path with some half cobblestone blocks. Threw down a few sparse kind of patchy fences because, you know, it's that kind of fence effect that we've been going for. Put in some slabs that would mark where we put the birch trees. Then using the trick of, you know, putting down some mud on top of logs, we elongated those trees, made them a bit taller. Then once I throw down some flowers and some grass, we were pretty much done. So there you go. The trade district is pretty much almost complete. We've built a lot of cool buildings there. There's a lot of cool shops, but they're all pretty generic. Apart from the blacksmith and the market stalls you see, they're all pretty much just generally generic shops. They're just buildings where anybody could set up shop. What we really should have is maybe like a, some unique shops in Dale, like a clock shop or a potion shop, alchemists, observatories, all those kind of wacky shops that will look different and the buildings will be exciting and fresh and cool to build because they'll be very unique and iconic. 
because I want to get away from the kind of generic building that we've been building so far. And this large patch of flat land outside the trade district is a perfect example. Now I was considering building a temple here, but I'm also considering maybe a large kind of clock tower building and an observatory or something like that. But hey, as we zoom out, check this out. The town is getting slowly filled up. I think that's about 25 to 30% full at the moment, maybe 33% at a stretch. Yeah, it's about a third of the way done. We're almost, well, we're not almost there, but you know, we're definitely making serious progress with Dale. And I'm pretty pleased with the way it's going. It's looking pretty pretty. So, I've been Stjint, and this has been Let's Build Erebor. We've been building Dale, and the houses and shops and all the things you'd find in Dale. Hit like and favorite and subscribe if you want to see more. And I will catch up with you next time when we head back to Dale to finish up some more buildings. Take care.